All right, preparing live stream, it says three, two, and one. <laughs> good morning, good morning, guys. All right, so it looks like we are live. If you have any questions about today's topic, about anxiety or stress consuming you, if you're, oh, I really want to get over this, this has really been bothering me, this is something I've had my whole life, or if you're somebody who's like, oh, I'm just starting to feel this coming on and I don't know what to do about it, um, or like me, if you're someone who had years of support and years of help, and I just didn't know what else to do, um, let me know. Let me know what's your story, what's your situation, what question do you have about it, how would you like to see the change happen in your life? What would you like it to look like instead? Share that in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you because when I do, then I can make this much more personal. I did have a few folks who've already shared their, uh, their thoughts and their anxieties. Um, and if you want, you can leave your name. If not, it could be anonymous. You could send it to my number. So my number's right over here, 954-657-3407. So you can text me. Um, you can personal message me, so it's not in the comments below. Um, you can also find me at facebook.com, Tammy Workman, a touch that gives back. Um, that's, that's who I am. That's my mantra. I am that touch that gives back, um, that people have touched my life, and it's made a difference for me. Uh, God has touched my life, and it's made a difference for me, and so now I can give that back. And so my company is Sparks Hope. Hey there, Miriam. Hola, darling. Um, so we were just talking about how folks can reach me so they can let me know what are some ways that they feel um, anxiety or stress, how might it be coming up, if it may feel like it's consuming them, or they just may feel it coming on freshly. So if you have any thoughts, Miriam, any questions about anxiety that comes up, or anyone that you know is dealing with it, you can also ask the question there. But thanks so much for being here. I love when you guys come on live because I it, it helps me. I'm not just talking to a screen. <laughs> All right. So um, first of all, I just want to share who I am. Uh, my name is Tammy Workman Lopez or Coach Tammy Starr. And I come on here um, every day and bring you information. But I come here live on Wednesday to address questions that you guys have um, things that are showing up for you in your life on a consistent basis and you're just feeling like this is affecting my health, this is affecting my relationships, this is affecting um, my business or my career. And so my goal in this is I know what that feels like. I've been there. Um, I was there most of my life and I was there because of a lot of legitimate reasons, a lot of abuse uh, growing up as a child. Um, this not good enough stuff was terrible, um, you know, suicidal ideation most of my life until I was in foster care. Um, and I just thought there was something wrong with me. I thought I was broken. And then once I moved past that, it started to change a little bit. It was more about, I'm not smart enough. I'm not old enough. Everybody else is so much older than me because I, I was always drawn toward older crowds and doing older things. I was a much more mature young adult. So everything I was involved in was, you know, 40 year olds, 50 year olds 60 year olds now I'm in my 40s and it could still come up now I know what to do I know how to handle it I know how to react to it because I've learned how to notice my thinking and what's coming up I've learned how to pay attention to my emotions and what they mean um, each emotion by the way is good every single one of them is good it's what we do with it that makes it not good for us so when the emotion comes up now I know what to do with it I understand my thinking, I can shift, I've learned how to practice a new mindset, a new understanding. I've learned how to change my entire life. And it's not because it just happened, right? It didn't just fall into my lap, oh boy, it didn't. Um, you know, and I wasn't even married until I was almost 40 because I needed to work through things and the relationships I kept getting in, well, they were just relationships. I didn't know how to look for red flags. I didn't know how to um, actually shop around it was just like, well, this person likes me. I like them. There we go. So there were so many things that I didn't understand that I do now. And that's why I come on here because when I'm working with my clients and I'm working with you guys um, as a life coach, I'm helping you to take a look at your goals, take a look at what skills are needed, um, bring in that communication gap, bring in um, if there's any negative thinking going on that shifts over into the mindset training. So if that negative thinking is happening, what am I telling myself? 
And when I'm telling myself that, how do I feel? Sometimes we're not sure. So let's take a look at how we feel. I feel like crap. I feel anxious. Okay, so if anxious. Now, anxiety can come from different things, guys. It's important to know that. Anxiety can come from um, genetics, right? Um, anxiety can come, which my mother, oh boy. I would have the genetics, let me tell you. <laughs> um, my mother was uh, depressed all the time. She was anxious all the time. That's just who she was. Um, she isolated, she, you know, all of that stuff. So not only did I have it genetically, uh, because that's who she was when I was born, you know, out of her womb, but I also had it through being raised and uh, through a lot of trauma and her parenting and her lack of parenting and her thinking that I just wanted to destroy her. It's very interesting. Um, and so all of those things can compound into it, but there are tools and there are techniques. And some of them I want to share with you today that actually can calm the system. It can calm your thinking. It can calm your emotions and put you back in control of what's going on. And then you can separate the part of, okay, so what's coming up for me chemically? You know, like what's happening? My day is going great, but this is happening chemically. So you can kind of separate the levels because if chemically I start to feel bad and then when I feel like a tension or a tightness and when I feel that I can take in a deep breath. So that's the first thing I want to share with you. Whenever you feel like that anxiety or that stress is consuming you and engulfing you, and it can show up differently for different people. For some people, they start to breathe quickly and not realize it. So your skin can feel like pins and needles. Um, for others, you feel this tension in your throat, which you may not notice, but it also tenses all the neck muscles. I'm a massage therapist, so I'm able to feel the tension in people and where they're holding it. And it's in the neck, it's in the shoulders, it's back in the rhomboids, it's into the lats. Um, which can go down. It, 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 it all is connected. It can go up into the jaws, which usually does. There's this tension that, that people with anxiety often have. And so there's so many things that you can do physically that actually can help that. And so one of the biggest things that I teach people, this here is your SCM. You can actually pinch that, and kind of massage that out. So I'd like you to do that while you're um, breathing nice and deep. Just notice how tense or tight or tender it is, right? So you can do it this way with this hand or you can do it this way with this hand, right? So imagine you've got money and you're flicking the money. <laughs> you grab that, it's your SEM, you kind of grab that and you're just manipulating it. Now, when somebody did this to me the first time in my massage class, I was like, what the heck? You can massage that? <laughs> so it might feel a little weird, right? Breathe in nice and deep. Just notice as you're doing that, you're putting your body in what's called parasympathetic mode, which begins to relax it nicely. It takes away the tension. You're putting your focus on your breathing, that touch. We don't often have touch, so you're helping the body have energy through that touch of relaxation. Doing the same thing up into the jaw, so still breathing as you're doing this. All of this here holds anxiety immensely which then pulls up into the muscles here. That's why you can feel that pressure in your temples, which actually continues, right? All of this is a sheet of muscles that are all connected. Each one is separate, but at the same time, it's also connected by sheets of muscles. So as you're doing this and thinking about releasing these, and, and in here, you can push it pretty good, actually. So like when I'm doing it, I'm, I'm pushing in, but notice each person is different if you don't feel it still start light there's a lot of my clients who are so tense but yet they're used to not noticing any pain they're shut off from pain right so it's important to just start slow even if you don't feel it and notice how it might feel like a ball if it feels like a ball then it's still really tight and tense and there's likely some pain happening there that you're not aware of so you can see I'm starting at the jaw and just rolling it around. Muscles go in different directions. So you can go in every single direction. And you'll, you'll feel right here next to the ear and the jaw, it sort of dips in. You can work right there at the edge of the jaw and then you can follow the cheekbone, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. And yes, it might seem a little awkward or look a little funny. So just don't look in the mirror. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's actually a good idea to use the mirror so you can see. Now, when you open your mouth, 
You feel that? You can feel there's a connection right there. You can work in that connection with your mouth open, continue to breathe. Different directions. Up and down. And now you can actually push into it a little bit when your, your mouth is closed. And this helps release so much tension that people with anxiety hold in their face and in their neck. You can do more with the shoulders and whatnot, but that's the biggest thing I wanted to share with you, especially biters, right? Um, those of you who bite, I do actually work for biting. Um, we do um, some really deep mind release and subconscious work on that. But what happens is a constant biting, constant biting puts the muscle like this, and it doesn't have to be biting like, Arr. you might not even notice, but you can hold your jaw a certain way. Like, right, my teeth aren't closed, but I'm still holding my jaw real tight. So you might notice that that's happening. You could be a biter this way. You can be a biter with your lips. Any of that biting or even a lot of talking, right? I talk a lot, gets that muscle locked down. So then there's the natural tendency that the muscle wants to pull your jaw. So you're actually biting for that reason too, and not because of anxiety, but it feels like it's anxiety because it's a very, it's a very similar physical experience. You can also use your knuckles if your fingers don't have the pressure. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So you can see what I'm doing. And although you might be going like, well, how does this help anxiety? When your thoughts are coming into that, your body's starting to lock up and it will cause even more levels of that experience of fight or flight. And you're in the fight mode, but you're telling yourself there's no fight here. And then the body just keeps building that energy. This actually helps you to begin releasing that energy. It also helps you, which is the next thing I wanted to share with you, to be able to create a new focus. So when you're creating a focus on your goal, so let's say my goal is I wanna release anxiety. This helps me to do it. This helps me to do it physically. The breathing is helping to calm everything down. It's bringing more oxygen. It's helping your heart to slow down the heartbeat that begins to pick up faster and faster with anxiety. It's helping the back to release and loosen, literally. So I'd like you to practice a breath with me. Um, you're gonna let the air go into your tummy and you're gonna notice your chest filling up. And then after you think it's as full as possible, you're gonna take another breath. So I'll show you, ready? So if you smoke, you could see that people do that when they smoke. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't smoke, you might be like, I've never done that before. But what you're doing and you'll notice is the stomach and the lungs just push up a little bit more. And you're actually forcing from the inside out a stretch. And so you're stretching your lungs, you're stretching your esophagus, you're stretching all of the ribs and all the intercoastal muscles in between those ribs where tension can be held. So let's try it again. Breathe it in nice and deep, stomach as well. And hold as long as you like. And then release. And notice how relaxed your body feels. <laughs> it's like magic. And that's just the physical aspect. When you're also putting your focus into this, what's happening mentally is your mind is being removed away from the thing that affects you. Your mind is focusing on many things. It's focusing on your breath. It's focusing on your tummy. It's focusing on your chest. It's focusing on the stretch. So your mind is busy. So it can't go over here in whatever it's feeling fearful about. And that distraction gives your mind and body time to call down so you can think. Because when you're not able to think, most likely what's going on is a lot of thoughts ruminating, one's clicking another, clicking another, which then clicks emotions, which clicks another emotion, which clicks another emotion, the body's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So this whole method helps you to go through that process. And here's, here's a fun little trick about that. I help people quit smoking. Many of these things smokers do. 
They move themselves away from the problem. They go outside, they're seeing something beautiful. They're taking nice deep breaths, right? Um, they may be focused. Oftentimes they are actually focused on the fire of their cigarette or the smoke as it's coming up. And so that's a big part of what I teach smokers. Minus that cigarette, you pull that cigarette out of the equation, they're doing all of these things that I just shared with you. And what I didn't mention to you is you can actually go outside and do this same thing. So now you're looking at nature, you're feeling the warm, the warm sun, the breeze, fresh air. So that actually is one of the things that when I'm working with smokers quitting, they're like, oh, so it's not the cigarette that's relaxing me? Actually not. Nicotine speeds up the heart rate. So it's just important to be able to see sometimes we're just not aware of what we're putting our bodies through. Hey there, Melissa. Good to see you. Beautiful. When, oh, Miriam said that was relaxing. Good, good. So practice that. That's so important. And practice it when you're not stressed out. So that way, when you are stressed out, it comes naturally. That's how you're programming. Now, I know, um, I, sorry, I keep scratching. I get a little itch. I know that this might seem like no big deal and you're like, whatever. It is a big deal. It's literally a big deal. So if it's something that you're like, yeah, I've already tried that, try it again. But now try it on with these other things I'm going to share with you. So you're focusing on your goal. One, you're really releasing any anxiety. But what else? What else has gotten you upset? What brought you to that space of anxiety? Anxiety is usually wrapped around thoughts of fear, right? And again, I've already mentioned, if there's things going on in your life that are traumatic, or things going on that really have caused it that you need to see somebody for, or there's stuff going on chemically that you need to see somebody for, that also needs to happen with what I'm talking about here. So if you're able to look and see what is causing this anxiety, what negative thinking am I doing? And here's the thing, guys, I didn't know, right? So you could have asked me that and I'd be like, I don't know if I knew, I would blah, blah, blah. Right. So I'm not just giving you good advice. I'm telling you, if you're not sure, reach me, call out to me. You got my information here. My phone number 954-657-3407. You are on any one of my platforms, reach out to me so I can show you how. OK, if you don't know how. And that's actually going to be my last reminder. Ask, ask. <laughs> right. Because if there's something I don't know how to do and you know how to do it, You'd want me to ask you, right? You're good at what you do. You want people to ask you how to do what you do. Same thing for me. I want to be able to help you be able to do it if you don't know how. I did not know how. And dang it, I did therapy and therapy and therapy and therapy for years. I did intensive boot camps of personal development for years. I got my associate's degree. I got my bachelor's in psychology. I got my master's in healthcare management. I've got my certification in life coaching. I got my certification in Christian life coaching. I got my certifications at CEUs and it was never enough. I've done so many trainings and so many coaches and so many um, um, hypnotherapist trainings and so many um, developments and so many mindsets and it was never enough. I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people and it was never enough because I kept thinking, yeah, but, yeah, but you don't know this yet. Yeah, but you can't say that yet. Yeah, but you're not good at this yet. Yeah, but you're not old enough yet. I'm 44, when is old enough gonna get here, <laughs> right? So a few years ago, I really began to understand about subconscious work. What is it that I have programmed in my thinking from the time I was a child that I can change? I did not understand that until that moment. And so it's important, Melissa Lynn says, I can relate. Yeah, that's so good. I'm so glad that you guys are able to really see this and to really be able to see it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to get these supports. How are you gonna get it otherwise, right? We think, oh, I'll do it myself. What have you done yourself? Did you learn to talk on your own? Did you learn to go to the bathroom on your own? Did you learn to eat on your own? Did you learn to take care of yourself on your own? There is nothing that we've learned on our own. We learned it from somebody else. Even the things that you've learned on your own per se, other people have done and you've watched them do it. So you're like, okay, they did that, I could do this. 
Now, there may be some things that you actually did on your own from like learning from experience, but that's after all of the tools and techniques you were taught from other people. So it's important to allow yourself to realize we're not here in a box. You're not here as one little Petri dish all by yourself. You were brought here by people. You're here to help other people and other people are here to help you. And so, yes, once you learn something, you could do it on your own, but it's going through that process of learning it and kind of feeling it out. And we all learn differently. I hate books to learn from only. I, I love books, I love to read, but I'll read stuff and I'll be like, the hell does that mean? I, I tried that, that didn't work, so now what? So it's okay if you're somebody who learns from hearing and somebody who learns from seeing and somebody who learns from practicing. That's whatever, that's how we learn. Don't judge it. And don't tell yourself you're gonna do it all by yourself and figure it all out. Why take a lifetime if you can take a year to learn something? So I've taken a lifetime. And so I offer all of the tools that I've learned and all of the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I've spent and all of the heartbreak and all of the confusion and all of the pain and all the stuff that I had to work through. Now I know how to implement these things and share them. So allow yourself to have that experience, allow yourself to be able to work on the breath work, work on the stretching breath work, allow yourself to work on your focus of your goal, allow yourself to ask for support. Then as you're doing that, some of the things you'll get support on is understanding, okay, so I do understand there's other things I need to work on. You know, if there's something going on chemi chemically or there's something going on trauma-wise. And if not, then I can realize that I'm taking my thoughts into a very fearful place. I'm telling myself something very scary which is taking me from a small level of fear into a bigger level of fear of anxiety. And because I do not know how to resolve that, that anxiety is constant, 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 constant. And so then it's bringing out anger. I'm getting mad at myself. It's bringing out sadness because I feel like I, I can't get this together. It's bringing out guilt because I can't believe I'm doing this again. It's bringing out inadequacy. Like I, I feel like I'm not enough. It's bringing out loneliness because I feel separate from everybody all the time. I just don't fit. And then when the body can't take it anymore, it goes into, I just feel frustrated and I can't take it anymore. And then the body depresses so you can handle. And so then we sit in this experience of depressed emotion, we call depression. And then we're like, something's wrong with me. I can't feel anything. I'm so shut off. But what if? What if these are signs for you? What if each emotion is here to tell you something? What if depression is just there to tell you that process that I just shared with you? It's there to tell you that you just went through that process and you need to take some steps backwards. You need to notice, oh yeah, I hit frustration. My body couldn't take it anymore, so it depressed it. So there's nothing wrong with me. My body's working correctly. The emotion's telling me I just went through that process and didn't handle something. So let me back it up. So frustration is telling me that there's various emotions I didn't pay attention to, all the ones I just mentioned. So let's take a look at the very first one. And in most cases, guys, we are stuck in, I don't know what to do. I am trying to figure this out and it's not working. And so then we go from this level of a little bit of uncertainty or fear. A lot of people don't like to use the word fear, but we can call it uncertainty. There's this uncertainty of, I don't know what to do but it brings the feeling of not safe, right? The situation does not feel safe. And so now I'm telling myself um, it's not gonna get better. And it may not get better if you don't have the tools to know how to get it better. And so now it's not getting better. Now I'm becoming more and more unsafe. Anxiety is now what we call that. And now it's more and more and more and more until I can't handle it. Until now I'm actually going into panic attacks. Now, again, like I said, this is not always just this simple cut. There's a lot of other situations, but you might find, and what I have found with a lot of my clients is this is the situation. Even if they've got the other things going on, they're taking care of that with their doctor or their therapist, and this makes it so much better. This actually alleviates 50, 60, 70% or more of what they're going through, which helps them to be able to figure things out more with their doctor and figure things out more with their therapist, figure things out more with their medications. So it allows for this space of development. And in this space, there's things that need to be learned. Like uh, here's a couple examples I'll share with you. So John shared, you know, my wife wants me to be a certain way. 
but I'm not that way. I'm not mean, I'm straight up, right? Um, she's just too sensitive, right? She's just sensitive about everything. And this is who I was when we met. So I feel anxiety about this, right? Everything's mostly okay now, but I feel anxiety about it because she's not happy. What's gonna happen, right? And so in this situation, what happens is being able to take a look at, he's got a belief. He's got a belief of this is my personality. This is just how I am. Well, that's not a personality trait. That's actually a behavior. That's actually just a habit, right? That's his habit and that's okay, right? He likes that habit. He likes being straight up. He likes being, you know, tough. He likes being, you know, a certain way. And he's kind with his wife, but there's an abrasiveness about him that still shows up. And so now that's learning reflective, like to take a look into your reflection, basically, and see what's your tone. When you say um, she's too sensitive, what do you think that's going to create? <laughs> Let's instead take a look at what is she really saying? She's really saying, I miss doing this with you or I miss doing that with you. Now, that's not what she's saying. What she's saying is you're not doing this and you're not doing that. So looking underneath at what the person's trying to say. So that's just different skills of being able to create communication. When we have these skills, and that's what I teach with life coaching, various skills that are needed. How do I reach this person? If you don't know how, you can't. It's not just going to drop into your head. You can't do it on your own. And if you sit there telling yourself, it's okay, I'll figure it out, then things won't get better. And then relationships do fall apart. It's just how it is. You're telling yourself a lie. And if you want to do that, you can, it's your life, but then you lose this beautiful relationship that could be a beautiful relationship instead of this kind of tension and stuff. And so it's just learning how to hear each other, learning how to connect. And I also work with each person because each person comes in with their own stuff. And when you're coming in with your own stuff, then you put your stuff together and it's this big jumble of junk and you can't pull it apart. So it's important to be able to pull apart what's yours, pull apart what's theirs, and work on it, then you come back together and you practice it out. So doing these techniques are essential. If you keep doing the exact same thing you've been doing, why do you think anxiety is there? And you could put the answer. That's a real question. <laughs> anxiety is there because you have a problem, it's not getting resolved, and you keep trying, right? You keep trying, but you're trying with the same tools. You're trying with the same skills. You're trying with the same person who's got the same perception of you and you of them. It's going to keep happening the same way. Or let's say this isn't even a person. Let's say it's just happening within you. You have the same view of yourself. You have the same beliefs that are on a subconscious level that you're not aware of. Just like when I was speaking with him, he wasn't aware of the fact that that wasn't a personality trait per se. If I believe it's who I am and I can't change it, then I'm right. But if I have a new belief and somebody says to me, and, and a lot of times our friends can't do this because our friends don't know how, but let's say it's somebody who's much more neutral and has the tools and knows how and says, you know, that's actually something that's a habit that you can change when you're around the people you want to. If you like it, you can keep it with the people that it works with. But if you want relationships with different types of people, like much more sensitive people or, um, you know, people who are on a kinder level who can't take that same abrasive behavior or don't even like it or believe that that's there to hurt them, then these are the ways that you can handle that and kind of role play it out. You don't have that in real life. People don't know how to do that. There's not judgment on that. They just aren't taught. And so that's what I do when I'm working with someone as a life coach is I see what skills are needed. I, when I was um, doing my work, I've taught independent living skills, which is, you know, how to live on your own. I've taught employment skills, which is how to go out and get work and how to do your resume and how to do all these various things. And I've taught communication skills to individuals, to teens, to kids, to adults, to couples. And so People don't just know that stuff. I don't just know that stuff. I had to get trained on that stuff. We're a lot of training. <laughs> and so, and I also had to do years and years of practice to get this good at it. So it's not like it just falls into your lap. 
So it's important also the subconscious belief of I got to do it myself. I can't trust other people. This isn't okay. It's not safe. I can't tell people that I don't know how to do it. That means I'm stupid. That means I'm not good enough. Guys, all of that is subconscious. It's not true. And now if now you're going to become more consciously aware of it that I've said it. And so as you're aware of it, you go, that's what's running me. That's one of the things. There's going to be many things. But as you're able to become more and more aware of it, it actually comes out of the subconscious and cleans up. You cannot become aware of it until you become aware of it. That's just how it goes. And so as you allow yourself to notice this process, you're giving your mind new information. Anxiety is already calming down. Your body's already calming down. Like Miriam said, just going through the breath work was calming, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna review over what I went over with you. Please share this information with other people. It seems simple and you might, this might be your world, right? You might be doing this kind of stuff and it's like matter of fact, but for other people, they've never heard it before. So you're going to make sure that you're paying attention to your breathing. As soon as you notice you're in any upset, any emotional upset, notice your breathing and practice this breath work. We're gonna try it again. You're gonna take in a nice deep breath. You're gonna, as you're gonna take it as, as full as you can. And then you're going to take another breath as I'll show you in a second and then hold it as long as you can and then slowly release. Okay, ready? Good. Now you might feel a little lightheaded. So if that's the case, just breathe normally. because you're not used to getting that amount of oxygen. Um, if you feel like you might be super lightheaded, just touch your chair or sit on the floor, or sit, sit in your chair, whatever. Um, and let's do it one more time. Ready, nice deep breath in. If you're feeling lightheaded, um, give yourself a little bit of relaxation time before you try it again. Nice deep breath in, into the tummy, into the chest, and then another big one. Oh, that feels so relaxing. And like I mentioned, here's the reason why. Your body is getting all of that oxygen it doesn't get. Your muscles are being stretched out from the inside out. Your esophagus is being stretched. Your lungs are being stretched. Your ribs and all the intercoastal muscles are being stretched. All of your back muscles are being stretched. The ones that are always super tight, the rhombus. Your traps are being stretched. Um, your lats will be, everything is getting a stretch from the inside out. Your tummy, if you're using your tummy, like I requested, your tummy and your organs are getting a nice stretch. How nice, right? And so that also pulls your attention away from whatever was bothering you because you have to focus on so many things at one time. So your breath work, you're changing your focus and you're allowing your emotion to calm down. And in doing that, I would like for you to also tell yourself, okay, so if my emotions are good, what is this emotion telling me? And so it could be um, whatever the issue was that you're thinking something negative. It could be that something scary is happening. It could be that you're just um, creating a scary story of what if. So take a look and see what is it that you're telling yourself? What's going on there? I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how it's going to be. What if it's like this? And what if it's like that? And oh my gosh, what if it's like this? Allow yourself to notice that stuff is very harmful for you. And unconscious stuff is running you, right? There's, there's a subconscious level that you have no idea yet. And so you're also going to give yourself an opportunity to ask for help if you don't know how to do these things. And by the way, you don't really know how to do these things yet because you haven't learned it. There's different things I go over with you. What emotion, what does that emotion mean? What is it telling you? Well, now that you know that, how can you handle it differently? And so we use a book that I'd like to share with you, The Secret Language of Feelings. I share this with everybody that I know. It's a beautiful book. And it goes over the emotion, so you'll have that yourself as well to be practicing it on your own. There's also different activities that I'll give to you that you'll be practicing on your own. It's essential that you allow yourself to learn this information so that anxiety and stress that you feel like is consuming you 
you win. You win, baby. It becomes you being in control of your thoughts and your emotions, your health, your relationships, your business, or your career. You get to be back in control of those things. That's the way it was meant. You may have never felt in control of those things in your whole life. It's time. There's no reason to wait anymore. And don't tell yourself that you can do it on your own because if you haven't so far, it just means you need support to help you. I did. I totally needed that support to help guide me. I tried to get help along the way. It's not like I wasn't. I was getting help, getting help, getting help, getting help. I did, 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 but I didn't find this. And now that I found this, which basically means I was able to take this information, I was able to interpret it and how to implement it into my life and how to make the changes. And somebody who's terribly anxious, feeling so not good enough about everything, no matter how I succeeded, it wasn't going to be enough. And here I am. I've been able to start my business. I've been able to grow my business. I've been able to allow myself a wonderful marriage. I've been able to um, go from being anxious and, and upset all the time about everything, all the time, feeling not good enough, feeling so low to who you see right now. And I'm still a work in progress. I do, I do say that. There are still things that I'm working on. And I've come to the conclusion and the acceptance that I'll be working on myself my whole life. And I'm okay with that now. I used to say things like, when am I going to get there? I'm always working on myself. What's wrong with me? Nothing. We continue to develop and that's great. So those of you who are coming on and watching the replay, I do come back and I do look at your questions. So don't feel like they won't be answered. Ask any question, write down any uh, thing that you feel any kind of anxiety about that you would like feedback on. You can message me. You can um, reach me, you can smoke signal, however you want to make sure that I get it. And if by chance I don't reply back, then just bump it, right? You can even just type in the word bump, which lets me know, hey, um, I, you didn't see this. Because things get busy. That doesn't mean I don't want to reply to you. It just means that things got busy. So please let me know. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Melissa, Miriam, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, good to see you. So any of you who um, are coming on here on uh, replay, just type in replay. So I know that you're here and I can just uh, reply back to you and thank you for really just stepping up. This stuff is new. It's different. It's weird. You know, it's uncomfortable, but it just, it's just because you haven't been there before. It's just because you haven't tried it on before. Or it might be like, yeah, I've done stuff like this, but I don't know the other stuff you're talking about. Or I have done this stuff, but I still feel stuck in this way. It just means there's some new levels you get to go to. Shrek was right. We're like an onion. We got layers. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for your time. I love you guys so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate your questions. I appreciate you popping on here live. Yay. Um, I appreciate you popping on for the replay. Yay. And as always, bring it in. Mm. big squishy hugs you take care of you and know that you are so cared for know that your life is so important know that you are absolutely amazing know that all of your emotions are good know that anxiety is actually here to help you and tell you what you get to do next and ask for help you do not have to do this alone and if you have thoughts that that's true let yourself know hey that's just a thought I had a thought I wanted to go somewhere and do that. And I changed my mind. So you can change your mind about that thought too. You take care of yourself. Have a beautifully blessed day. And I'll see you next week, Wednesday. Let me know what other topics or concerns or things of interest that you'd like to hear about. And then I will make Wednesday much more specific and individualized to you. And those of you who like to be early birds, um, because I'm here at 8.15 Eastern on Facebook. I'm on at 7 a.m. Eastern on uh, Cloud. Face Cloud Clubhouse. <laughs> I keep calling it Face Cloud. 7 a.m. on Clubhouse, and I stream here live. Um, I do that most Wednesdays. This Wednesday, it just couldn't get it to work out. So um, I'll be doing that too. And that's just allowing ourselves to come in and set our, in, our intention for the day and also just uh, say a prayer together. Um, so, anyways, you guys take care of yourselves and mwah, ciao for now. <laughs>